Would you believe me that this is the hardest thing I've ever had to make a video about in my life? Like this is the third or fourth time I'm trying to make this video in over like a two year span and I can't tell if it's getting harder or easier with time. All right, so everybody has that one game, right? Like that one that you as an individual will go to bat for no matter what. Even if you know and understand that that game isn't that spectacular, but whether it's the thoughts and memories of childhood or the stubborn pride that refuses to budge for no discernible reason, that one game that when you bring it up, you'll either have the whole room go, oh yeah, I remember that, it was neat, or everyone will look at you completely baffled. Like you just told them that roadkill isn't all that bad if you just season it enough. For me, that game is a little 2009 classic. We ski and snowboard. And here's how it went down. Bandai was having their usual meeting and they say to themselves, You know boys, 2009's a pretty slow year for gaming. Why not spruce it up with a masterpiece? And we gotta do it ASAP. I'm talking next week. And it's gotta be for that fancy Wii thing everybody likes. But sir, how are we gonna make something that good in such a short amount of time? Well, son, we do it the same way our ancestors did it. By forcefully breeding lesser creatures. And that's when they took these two puppies and gave them the Lego Star Wars treatment. And then in about six hours of development time, they got enough duct tape and witchcraft to force a beautiful birth to happen. The perfect mix of ski, snowboard, and some worthless Wii Fitness shit that nobody used or cared about to create the perfect video game. Ski and snowboard, it's like the perfect combination, like chocolate and peanut butter, and that weird shit was the wrapper you throw away. Wii Ski and Snowboard was the fifth title in the family series of games, and it came out to a relatively positive reception. It's a snowboarding game for the Wii, it's not any old Sonic type masterpiece, you, you have to understand. Wii Ski and Snowboard is a game where you ski and snowboard your way down two mountains, with lots of secrets and fun customization options, and other stuff I never really cared about as a kid. I swear this game is stuffed with content to the point I'm still discovering new things to this day. Like did you know there was an mp3 player with lots of Namco music and remixes in it? I didn't, and I definitely didn't know there was a whole wildlife photography thing in this game. In fact, I still don't know where that is, because no one talks about this game online and you can't really find any info on it. How dare the internet care about other crappy 2000s titles, and not the one that I like. I guess it doesn't matter though. As a kid I really couldn't care less about most of this content, I didn't care for the races, I didn't care for the tricks. I cared about just looking around and having fun on those two mountains. Racing my way down them with either my family or any of the NPCs that the game lets you invite for the adventure. Speaking of which, and I'm only telling you this because you won't find this information online, the NPCs are usually the Miis that are already created on your Wii or the other custom characters you made in the character creator. Though, if you're not interested in making other NPCs, the game already has some already pre-made, so don't worry if you don't want to go solo. Though I'm not really sure why you wouldn't care about the customization, because the customization in this game is just... stupid and funny, and I love all the options. Wii Ski and Snowboard was always just one of those games I could always enjoy and mess around in. Even if the game itself isn't really something that sets the world on fire, or I guess brings the world into a new ice age, I still have so many fond memories playing it with the people I care about, and making up my own adventures to go on inside its world. And you know, just being genuinely amazed at all the little things you can do. Like throw snowballs at the screen by just flicking the Wiimote, or just goofing around on the loading screen trying to find this little guy. <sighs> it's just too bad that this game never got a sequel with way more content, and even more resorts to explore. It's just... it's just such a tragedy. What in Sam hell happened here? Sir, we've had an interesting development. Instead of just one offspring, the subjects instead had a whole litter of sequels, minigames, and spin-offs. What should we do, sir? Well, the smart decision from a business point of view would be to slowly release these games in a yearly fashion, to keep a steady content flow to our fan base. But I'll be damned before I do anything like Activision. 
Give me a controversial Swiss science student, a sewing kit, and a hunchback. We're gonna make a monstrous sequel. Go Vacation. Oh, I love this game. Go Vacation is like going from Smash 64 to Ultimate. There is so much content here that it feels like Bandai skipped a whole series worth of sequels to give us this absolute smorgasbord of gameplay. Out of the way, Kirby Superstar, Nintendo's got a new buffet of gameplay. Well, new-ish, because apparently this game came out on the Wii before the Switch. I have no idea how I missed that. I feel a little disappointed in myself, especially when I think about how excited I was when I saw this pop up on Nintendo's Twitter. Don't worry, I'm off that platform. We all gotta make self-improvement. Though, speaking of improvement, you can definitely feel the upscaled Wii feeling a bit when you play through Go Vacation. Mostly in the janky camera control. Why is the same stick I move on the same as I control the camera? Go Vacation is a lot. We got four, technically five, resorts to explore and goof around in. We got the return of the Snowy Mountain, this time being a Frankenstein's monster of the previous two snow resorts, along with some new things thrown in there like a village, a creepy sun, and the introduction of snowmobiles and snow tubes, really adding some new ways to play on this old style of resort. There's a sunny beach resort that's a mix of a fun ocean and jungle vacation with ancient ruins in both the jungle and under the sea with the main ways of travel being a jet ski or a four-wheeler. Though, there is an island off the coast where you can actually go around and surf. Gnarly, dude. Ah! Next up is a city-themed resort based around carnivals and skate parks, where you can shred up the pavement with your home dogs on skateboards and rollerblades. And I'm not remorseful at all for ruining your day with that last sentence. Then we got a plain mountain resort, based around European vacations and farm vacations where you ride horses, boat around a canoe, or GTA this bitch in a car. This game would be better with blood in it. At the start, you only have access to the beach resort, but as you collect stamps in the stamp rally, you unlock the rest of the resorts, including the villa, which lets you customize and create your own house. As you can already tell, you've got a lot to mess around with in this game, and man is it fun to just explore and relax in the many different resorts. Racing around the different resorts, taking pictures of the many animals that are a little too comfortable around humans, and meeting up with NPCs that travel and play games and to eat with finding treasure hidden around the resorts, and looking out for the many mythical creatures hidden around the island. But that's not all you can do in Go Vacation. I mentioned the stamps earlier, so let's go more into those. Basically, the collection of the stamps is the game's way of touring you around the different resorts and getting a feel of the different activities to do, before setting you loose onto the island to be absolutely trounced by some grandma's high score over the internet. Yep, there is a competitive... Uh, competitive isn't the right word. There's an online element to this game, but the main thing for the stamps to do is to introduce the player to the literal metric ton of minigames, most of which have alternate playstyles and rule sets if you want something more challenging. Though if the games in there are too challenging for you, then don't worry, you only have to play them, not beat them to get the stamp, though most of them are stupid easy anyway. Uh, that's where the whole alternate modes thing come in. Now, these minigames are really just above or equal to your standard Mario Party type feel. Not exactly all that in-depth or interesting, but extremely passable as it's included in what feels like the perfect family game. Where you're allowed to go dog sledding, swim around ocean ruins, taking pictures of wild animals, and then finishing it off with a quick game of tennis. And that right there is why I'm so infatuated and interested in Go Vacation. It took what was a simple and fun little game about snowboarding with the family, and taking that and going all into this full-on family vacation party game. I don't know why it's so fascinating or why it's just so fun to me, other than I just think its existence is... kinda neat. Go Vacation isn't the perfect party game. I mean, it's not even the best on the two consoles it's been released on. But what it is, or what it does, is try to be this simulated vacation for kids, where you make a custom character with the people you care about, and you just have fun for an hour or two. 
It's not the most interesting game. I mean, honestly, it's taken me like three years or so, you know, just trying over and over and over just to make this video. It's really hard to try to sell this game to somebody without just coming out and saying, you know, I just think it's kind of neat. It's got its negatives, like I really wish it didn't take the Animal Crossing approach of really only having one save file on the console, but it does make more sense to have it in a game like this, since all saves are technically on the same file, but in Go Vacation every person has separate progression. Which I can see making it kind of a fun competitive experience in a household to try to make the best villa, or maybe, you know, compete to see who gets the highest scores on the minigames, without having to drag everybody to play together, you know, kind of similar to how a shared Minecraft server works. Go Vacation isn't gonna blow your socks off. But man, I know I've said this a hundred times, but I just find it so fascinating. We shouldn't always judge games by comparing them to others. Sometimes it's just best to judge a game based on what it's trying to be. Mario Odyssey sets out to recapture the old Mario 3D sandbox with a modern twist. And I think it does that very well. Halo ODST tries to be this different atmospheric take on Halo with a more grounded storyline, and I think that it accomplishes that goal. The recent Resident Evil remakes try to bring back the survival horror classic with a more modern playstyle and graphics, and I think it knocks that goal out of the park. Go Vacation tries to be this fun, family sandbox game with lots of secrets to find and mini games to play, and although the overall quality can be argued, I think... No, I know that it absolutely is the game it's trying to be. And you know what? I even have fun playing it by myself. Which, you know, is kind of sad, but you know what? It's the truth, because it is a really fun game. I hope the companies evolve to make more games like this someday. I think there's a lot more that can be done with this series. Oh, and did I mention you can also have puppies? Bruh. Honestly, what more could you want out of a game? What? Fishing? Well, guess what, mother- Howdy there, my senpais and oni-chans. It's me, the comedic interpretation of the Bandai Namco president. Being held at gunpoint by some kind of man, or maybe it's some kind of weird purple cat bear thing. Either way, he's kind of chubby. Uh, and he's forcing me to come here to tell you kind folks at home to please pick up our brand new remakes of Klonoa and Pac-World. The hell are those things? No idea, but the sooner they come back, the sooner I can force the internet to guilt corporations into bringing back the series that I care about. Ah, shit, it's one of those hostage situations. Well, either way, folks, do that thing I told you to do and remember to have a wonderful day. You really think this is gonna work? Well, if it doesn't, I can always buy $40,000 worth of stock and ask them for the be brought back, you know, at an investor meeting or something. Is that, uh, is that gonna work? I don't know. I guess we'll see.